All right. Stupid bear. The bear's the devil. Bang. More free time. Who do we make friends with today? Everybody. Everybody is friend. Yes. Leave the area. No, I don't want to go to Mondo's room. What if I want to talk to Mondo? Is anybody in the laundry room today? Ugh. Um, let's talk to Hina again. Each and every person has to do their job. The cooperation of each player is true teamwork. You got it. That's a quote from the famous rugby, rugby player Yuji Matsuo. I don't know who that is. I've never watched rugby in my life. We got to do the same thing. Cooperate so we can survive. Should I hang out with Hina for a while? Yes. Yeah. You want to go for a run to relieve some of this stress? Hina and I went for a light run through the school. Hina and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Hina a present? Would I like to give Hina a present? I don't know. I don't know if I have anything to give her. Yeah, let's find out. Uh, she likes Hope's Peak Ring, God of War Charm, Red Scarf, Bunny Ear Moss, Cherry Blossom Bouquet. I think I have the Cherry Blossom Bouquet. What is this? It's super cute. For real? You sure I can have this? I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. <clears throat> Something wrong, Hina? I've reached my limit. I'm stuck in here. I can't do any sports. Can't do anything. I'm sick of it. I want to get out under the sun and do some laps. Run a marathon. I want to do some real sports. Sports. I was getting yelled at. Hina, calm down, alright? I can't do anything in here. If I can't move around, I'm gonna die like a bunny rat. What? I always heard rabbits die from loneliness. That's Whatever. I'm gonna die if I can't get some proper physical activity. Wanna wrestle? Don't you think that's a little extreme? You think I'm kidding, don't you? But I seriously can't sit still, you know? Why else would I have joined six sports teams in school? Six? That's right. Yeah, track, basketball, softball, volleyball, tennis, and the big one. The big one. <sighs> she got to her main sport, but ran out of juice. I think it's gotta be swimming. Your main sport is swimming, right? Mm. Yeah, you got it. 
Uh, I don't even care what stroke it is. I just get me in a pool under the blue sky. But isn't it hard to do that many sports, even for you? Well... If I can't move, I'll just shrivel up and die. And I need a challenge. More and more new stuff to try. A challenge? I mean... What I really love about sports isn't winning, you know? It's having to fight and struggle and give it all you've got to reach the top. It's that excitement, that fear that you might suffer a heartbreaking loss. But... When you finally reach that goal, it's just lonely. It's lonely at the top, you know? I never I never really got into sports, so I couldn't really relate to what she was talking about. But I could tell that the reason Hina was so amazing was how hard she could fight and struggle. Um... So that's why I want to push myself as hard as possible when it comes to swimming. I want to aim for the very highest mountaintop. The highest mountaintop? I'm talking about the gold medal, of course. Aim for the gold, even if it means I'm a super gold spaz. You are a bit of a spaz. Did she just call herself... Okay, but if that's what you want, isn't that all the more reason? You have a goal. Why are you standing around making excuses? Excuses? Just a second. Hey, when did I ever make any excuses? Sure, maybe we're stuck in here right now with no way out. But if you really want to make an effort, shouldn't you try to see what you can do in here? Oh. Bah! That's a challenge. You just made an official challenge. Yeah, totally. But I think you're right. If I want to get that gold medal, I have to make every effort I can. I want to become a genius of effort. I bet Ian Thorpe said something like that. Okay. I don't know who that is either. Yeah, I can't go around making excuses just because we're stuck in here. Alright, I think I'm going to go do some push-ups in my room. Like maybe around a thousand or something. Almost before she was done talking, Hina took off like a bat out of hell. She recovered exactly as fast and strong as I would have expected. Your maximum number of skill points has increased. Can I have a skill from Hina, please? Ah, back to my room. Ah, goddamn. That's it, I got one. Hello, bear. Ahem. School announcements. School announcements. Oh, this is new. Nighttime is quickly approaching, but before it arrives, all students, please gather in the gym immediately. But. Emergency! Emergency! But. Oh, no. Why now? All of a sudden. I really don't like the sound of this. I have a terrible feeling. Time to go to the gym. Kyoko, go to the gym. Oh, Kyoko, did you hear the announcement just now? Indeed. I don't want to go, but we don't have any other choice, right? I can't imagine it's going to be good news, but it's not a good idea to defy him here and now. Goodbye. So I'm going on ahead. I really can't do anything except Monokuma, what Monokuma tells me. Alright. Hi, Mondo. How's it going? Yo. Hey, man. You about to head in? Yeah, has everyone already gone ahead? <laughs> Looks that way. I don't like it, but nothing good's gonna come from ignoring that goddamn bear. Uh... Mondo? You sure you're okay? You kinda went all out in that sauna. Huh, who went all out? That shit doesn't even phase me. But you know, 
<laughs> there at the edge of hell, a promise between men was waiting for me. Never saw it coming. Yo. You never saw it coming? Anyway, let's get our asses into the gym. Man, something unique must have happened between the two of them. Ah, oh, who's dead? Is everybody dead? Am I dead? I'm probably dead. Whee! Jimbledy jimble. Yes, Hifumi. Let's go. Good to see you're still alive. Hey, Hifumi, how come you haven't gone in yet? <clears throat> Why is that? Mr. Naegi, don't scare me like that. S sorry, but we really should go inside. <laughs> no, don't go. You can't go. Mm -hmm. That's what my ghost friend is telling me. I don't feel good about it either, but we can't just ignore this. Damn, that's true too. I suppose. I have to go too. Womp womp. <sighs> Asking us to gather together all of a sudden like this. What could he possibly want? Well. Indeed. What might evade us this time? <laughs> He keeps things interesting, that's for certain. Um. How is that funny? Can't you smile like a normal person once in a while? Like how the housewife on a classic TV show smiles at the end of an episode? What the heck? There's something totally messed up with you if you can laugh at a time like this. Which of us is actually messed up, hmm? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing in particular, just admiring, that's all. I don't want to kill anyone, but I also don't want to stay here, living in blind denial, day after day. Hmm. It was I was just admiring how you could live like that and still keep your sanity. What is this? I'm not in denial. <laughs> that reminds me, remember how you kept talking about how the police or whatever would come help us? How th how'd that turn out? Seems to me there's no sign whatsoever of possible rescue. But that's just... Huh? I wonder what actually happened. Certainly. It's strange, that's true. There's no way the police wouldn't know about it. We're right in the middle of a major urban area. The police suck! Mm. On the contrary, the, main, the mastermind may, just, may be just that powerful to take control even of the police. Could it be? Oh, this might not be related, but... Then don't say it. Hmm. Nope. Gonna say it. It's not like some occult mystery. It's about last night. I was near the main hall, just staring off into space. When all of a sudden, I heard it. Huh? You heard what? Hmm. A sound that I don't really know what it was. Hmm. What kind of sound? Hmm. Well, like I said, I don't really know. But if I had to describe it, man, it was like a construction site, I guess. A construction site. I mean, I could just be making that up. I only just barely heard anything. <laughs> then you definitely made it up. Must have just been the sound of the ocean in that head of yours. What you talking about, Toko? I don't know who said that. Hello, Monokuma. He's arrived. What Hero heard wasn't the sound of construction. But it could have been an explosion! Bakuretsu, bakuretsu! Huh? Or maybe a machine gun! <laughs> that can kind of sound like construction in a way. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, beyond this point, my mouth is zipped! My lips are sealed! I am fully puckered! It's a secret little secret! Fine. Then let's move on to what you can tell us. 
Why did you call us all here? You don't beat around the old bush, do you? Ready for me to get to the point, huh? But before that, do you mind if I vent a little? I'm low on energy these days. My stitching's even losing all its shine and luster. I'm thinking it's probably become become of this whole hum boring old everyday life. Okay. I'm looking for something with a little more stimulation, something rife with danger and intrigue. Listen, can I just be frank? The next Blackened hasn't shown up yet, and I'm getting bored! Hey, um... So I've decided to come up with a new way to motivate you! Motivate? Is it another set of videos or something? Are you gonna show us some demented thing to try and drive us all to murder? Drive you to murder? What a mean thing to say! Just awful! I don't know what you've got planned, but we're not going to kill each other anymore. No matter what you do, I swear to God, we won't. That's very big talk. Do your very best to back it up, okay? Now then, with your permission, let me begin. So this time, it's... Embarrassing memories and secrets. As long as you're alive, it's a given that there's things you don't want other people to know about you. So I did a little investigating of my own, and I dug up some of your darkest secrets! And those embarrassing memories and secrets are all contained in the envelopes right here. Oh. I'm going to hand them out now, so take a second to take a peek. As Monokuma spoke, he tossed the envelopes at our feet. I quickly snatched the envelope with my name written on it. I nervously pulled out what was written inside, and my entire body suddenly went rigid. Makoto wet the bed until he was in fifth grade. I mean, it's not that bad. What? How? How did you find out about this? Everyone started talking at once. You have 24 hours! If someone doesn't become blackened by then... All your deepest, darkest, most embarrassingest secrets will be exposed to the world! Maybe I'll roll by a crowded intersection in a van strapped with loudspeakers and spill the beans. Wouldn't that be so embarrassing? So that's what you meant by motivate? <laughs> yep, you got it! They're all pretty unpleasant, trust me. None of you want me to reveal that stuff, right? It's definitely something I'd rather people not know, but... We'd never kill over something like that. What, what did you say? He's right. Your plan is doomed to fail. No one's gonna murder someone for this kind of thing. This is kind of depressing. Is it because, for better or worse, your memory is still a way to connect to the outside world? I have stuff I wouldn't want anyone to know no matter what, so I assumed you'd all be the same. Which is why I put so much effort into preparing this next motive. Man, you're saying you really won't kill each other over this stuff? That just sucks. Well, what can you do? Okay, then in 24 hours, I'll expose all your secrets just to make myself feel a little better. Okay. So sad, so depressed. Fair not well. With an almost convincing look of depressed dejection on his face, Monokuma receded into the gym's depths. Oh, um... I didn't know what to expect at first, but maybe we dodged a bullet on this one. I mean, yeah, having no secrets revealed is going to be totally embarrassing, but that's seriously not enough to give someone a reason to kill, right? Listen to me. Good news, everyone! I have a brilliant idea! You hear me? Why don't we all just confess the secrets in those envelopes right here and now? Without a doubt. If we do that, any and all motive for murder will vanish. That's pretty smart, right? Quiet down and listen. Okay, so my embarrassing thing is... <laughs> I, I don't want to hear your stupid story! What? Besides, I don't... I don't want to talk about it. I don't care what anyone says. I don't want to talk about mine. As for me... Neither do I. Not because it is unpleasant, but because it is impossible. Oh? Well, it's just human nature to want to hear it when you say it's impossible. 
come on, it'll be good for you. Absolutely not. Come on, come on. I'm just gonna let him have that one. Honestly. As I said. Here we go. Hey. I said I don't want to talk about it, you human bag of lard. I agree with them. There's no need to discuss it. What do you think, Chihiro? Uh, I'm sorry. I really don't want to talk about it right now. But, but... I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later? After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. So, um... If you don't want to talk, you don't have to. I'm not super excited to talk about it either. That's true. If everyone's that much against it, even if my bro's the one that suggested it, I gotta say no. Well, that's okay then. Either way, if it's just a few secrets, I'm sure nobody's about to kill anyone over it. I hope you're right. A secret so bad you'd kill someone to keep it. Nobody's got something like that, right? Okay, I'll stop with all the secret talk, but each of us has 24 hours to get ready. Having our secrets exposed isn't going to be fun, but it's not like we're going to die because of it. So, you know, um, don't do anything hasty. The way you keep repeating it kind of makes me worry even more. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. I know it's going to be tough, but... Bing bong. Nighttime already, huh? Alright, let's call it a day. Of course. Good idea. We need to prepare for tomorrow. I was left with an anxiety I just couldn't shake, but... We left things as they were, and left things as they lay. One by one, we headed back to our rooms. Secrets or memories you don't want anyone to know about. A way to connect to the outside world. Honestly, all that crap, Mo crap Monokuma was spouting didn't have any effect on me. There's no way anyone would kill over stuff like that. At least that's what I thought. But maybe I was just being optimistic. Which is probably why, without too much of a struggle... Jeez, I'm more tired than usual. Super tired today. Yeah, me too. I fell asleep. But what I didn't know was that even then, a tragedy was taking place. Bear Theater. Oh, a gun! Hey, do you have a second? I want to confide in you. It's about the prevailing world attitude right now. The difference between passive and active, I mean. For example, it's the difference between like, oops, I killed him, and yeah, that's right, I killed him! Amazingly, there are tons of people who don't understand the difference. Can you believe it? But there's a huge difference between oops and that's right. You know what I'm saying, right? Anyone can kill someone in the heat of the moment, but surprisingly few can do it with calculated intent. To make that choice, then put it into action. It's way harder than just letting your emotions lead you. It's all about preparation. Resolve. So maybe you're wondering, what's the point I'm trying to make? Well, I'm not totally sure myself. Maybe you should try reading. 
reading between the lines. Mm? Morning. G good. Good morning. Good morning. Uh. Blah. <laughs> nice reaction. I'm glad to see you didn't disappoint. What? What are you doing here? Yeah. Wanted to spice things up, so instead of a school announcement, I decided to wake you up in person. The hell for? <laughs> because it's fun. Hmm. And as long as I'm here, I figured I'd let you hear it right from the bear's mouth. Hear what? <laughs> are you sure you should be acting this laid back? I mean, even though something happened to one of your buddy-buddy classmates? What? What? Blah, 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 blah. Your face is all blue like someone on the verge of death. What What happened? What are you talking about? <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. Good luck. Something's happened to someone. Is it? Was it? No, it can't be. There's no way someone would. But what if? No, what ifs are pointless, especially now when the dining hall. I need to get to the dining hall. Okay, five people. Ah, ah Makoto! Uh, um, Are you okay? Hey. Did Monokuma talk to you too? Hiro, Hina, Sakura, and... <sighs> Byakuya. You're the only ones here? Where's everyone else? Either they're already off trying to verify what Mo Monokuma said, or they've fallen victim to the something that Monokuma mentioned. Something? Perhaps. It can't be. Has it happened again? Murder! After hearing what Monokuma had to say, the worst possibility forced its way into my mind. It took everything I had to drive that thought away. Uh, um... So, if someone re something really did happen, does that mean someone did it because of what happened yesterday? Huh? It can't be. That stuff was just a bunch of old memories. <laughs> just old memories? Don't be so sure about that. Clearly, someone felt it was more important than that. W what? <laughs> to judge someone, so someone else's values based on your own outlook. Do you realize how dangerous that is? What the heck? W what? Why didn't you say something yesterday? Naturally. Did you already forget? This isn't a co-op game. It's every man for himself. What good does it do me to go out of my way to help you? Stop saying that already. There's something wrong with him, for serious. Did he get brainwashed or something? That's not important. What matters right now is that we find out what happened. That's fine. She's right. Let's all split up and begin looking. <laughs> the game is afoot. Um, I'm going to go look in the kitchen because I'm hungry. Is anybody in here? Probably not. Cool. Let's make breakfast. Kitchen. <laughs> Schlorp. Okay. I'm going to the pool. Or the bath. We'll start in the bath. That's reassuring. Oh, can't I, like, fast travel? Um, what button brought up the map? Q? Was Q the map? No. E, R. No, R was leave the house. Uh... Shift is the run button.
Tab. Yeah. So it wouldn't open before. Oh, there we go. Okay, well. Leave the area. in here somebody's dead and I want to find out who guess it makes the most sense to go upstairs Okay. The dining hall. Love that there's a friggin' Gatling gun there. Huh? The door's open, but aren't they supposed to be locked? What? For this investigation, I have unlocked the doors. Please look around to your heart's content. That's yeah, not weird. It, investigation. It's all clear now. Just as I thought. Byakia. I see. Judging from what he just said, there can be no doubt a murder has really has taken place. C come on. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? W suspicious? <laughs> it seems nobody's searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. He was muttering as if talking only to himself. Without waiting for a reply, he pressed his hand against the girls' locker room door. And the door swung open without a sound. Or a gunshot. In that moment, time seemed to freeze. Blood, 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 oh, no. Oh, my. That was, uh, what the fuck? I don't know how long it took for me to fully comprehend what reality, uh, of the reality of what I was looking at. But as soon as I did... I screamed. A wild, almost primeval scream escaped from my mouth. And then I pulled my pants. Daily life. Deadly life. Fuck. I tried to suppress my screaming, but it was useless. It surged out of me like water from a spring gushing out of the ground. Byaki, on the other hand... Most unusual, don't you think? He was totally calm. Almost like he was watching this all unfold in front of a TV screen. I see. Look, Shihiro's corpse had been suspended somehow. And something's been written on the wall in blood. 
Bloodlust. Such a brutal way to kill someone. No, this is beyond brutal. Wouldn't you agree? They killed her. How could it not be brutal? Hmm. No, that's not my point. This murder is far too bizarre for any everyday amateur to have committed it. Unlike with Sayaka, this murder was not a crime of passion or necessity. Hmm. It's almost as if whoever did this did it for fun. You see what I mean, don't you? What? My head was swimming. I was still reeling, too confused to understand what he was trying to say. And before I could even begin to clear my head... Hey! I heard screaming! Did something... <gasps> that was a way better scream. Chihiro! That's a new one. A body has been discovered! Yeah! Yeah! certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Great. What the hell was that? Ah, oh, that's right. You were unconscious during Sayaka's, so you don't know about it. Ah, oh, they spilled blood on the boob lady picture. What you just heard was the body discovery announcement. Apparently, when three or more people discover a body, an announcement plays to let everyone know. I imagine it's so that the search for the culprit can proceed fairly for everyone involved. Proceed fairly? The body discovery announcement? Then Chihiro really is... Dead, yes. Before you start screaming your head off, go round everyone up. It seems another game has begun. Another life or death game to uncover a killer. Wow, that shit went south quick. Taka bolted out of the locker room. As everyone made their way to the scene, it felt as if no time at all had passed. It was like my sense of time had just taken wing and flown away. Like the bird that shares wings? No? Bad show is bad? When I finally came back to myself, I saw everyone had the same look of confusion, fear, and anger. We all just stood there, gathered around Chihiro's body. Damn. Holy crap! I couldn't keep her safe! So there's another victim! Mm. Which means we are now in the same position once again. Yeah. Fuck, man! What the, the fuck is this? What? It's a dream! It's a dream! It's all just a dream! <laughs> In fact, I haven't even been born yet. I don't have any memory of ever being alive. <laughs> Shut up. Um, am I just inspecting the body and... Oh my god. Is this Chihiro's blood? No, there are more important things to worry about. What do you mean there are more important things? No, there are more... For now, pay attention to the wall. Hmm? Yeah. I said it once already. There's a word written there. On the wall? On the wall! The shit on the wall! The word bloodlust is written on the wall in... Duh. So... I don't think that it's any kind of dying message. It's just too... strange. <laughs> but you know, that thing about writing bloodlust in blood, doesn't it sound kind of familiar? A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial, serial killer? Genocide Jack! Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend whose grisly attacks were famous all across the country. The ultimate murderous fiend, creating a reputation of abnormal, downright cruel killings. Then this is some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style? But why would anyone do that? Perhaps it's the work of the real Genocide Jack. The real? Wait, are you saying Genocide Jack is here in the school? No way. 
there's no way. But going so far as to ride bloodlust at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. What is it now? Toko! Hina was, po Hina was pointing toward the entrance to the girls' locker room. Uh, Toko was the last to arrive, and now she was just standing there. No, why, why, why? Why? Re. Get dunked. Get dunked. She fainted. That did not sound good, man. T Toko! Hina rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started trying to shake her awake. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up! Oh, that's right. I just remembered what she said about how she faints anytime she sees blood. So she is hemophobic. I imagine she does not watch too many horror films then. This isn't a violation of the rules, right? I mean, technically, she passed out somewhere besides her room. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping, like, on purpose. Ah, hmm. uh, so since she didn't faint on purpose, it doesn't count. Gotcha. Just a second. Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up. As, as if she'd heard her, Toko suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction. I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. In no time flat, she was just standing up. Ignoring the physical contortion she had to go through, her motions were totally haphazard. What? Sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? Soko, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? What the heck? She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. No, 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 everything's fine. At least the stutter's all gone. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> it's clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. So, um... I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? If you need help, I don't mind. Um, Taka, could you help me? <gasps> she totally ignored me. Very well. You take care of the girl, and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mondo on guard duty again? Uh, hold on a second. Rushing to an investigation. Hmm. The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. Don't make me repeat myself. There is no question that Chihiro was murdered by someone among us. Hmm. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Of course. Right as rain! But don't take it as a bad thing. It's just a fact of life. Because that's how graduation works. Can we stop panning to that picture? It is really depressing and disturbing. Then it's happened again. Is that what you're saying? That another one of us? Another one of us killed a fellow classmate. What? Does that freak you out? You guys got no balls, you know that? There's just nothing down there at all. Well, I'll let you pray to mine if you want. Actually, I don't have any either. Sorry. Oh. Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? I sure did, chum. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. 
So, please do your very tippy-top best on this investigation. No way. Do we really gotta do another investigation? Come on. Examining the corpse of one of our friends. <laughs> Having to suspect all our other friends. Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. Oh, no. I hate it too. I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Just accept it already. After all, blood is, a, is just a liquid. A dead body is a simple object. <laughs> you are very enthusiastic about all of this, are you not? Naturally. How can I not be? If we don't unmask the culprit, we all die. Th that's true, but to jump into it so soon... Do you want to die? Fine, then go off and die somewhere. Right now, go ahead. You're a waste of space. Damn you. A dead body is an object. Piece of shit. Chihiro wasn't an object. Show a little respect or I'll beat some India. Calm down. Everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Byakuya said. K Kyoko. Because... If we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right that Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Chihiro, That's right. then unless we do something, more victims could start piling up. What? Forget more victims. If we mess this up, we're all dead meat. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. Hmm? What? I don't remember any rule like that. Actually, I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? The new rule has been added to the regulations menu. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on the least, at least the potential of a serial killer angle. Just one would totally murder that possibility. For you. Farewell for now. I'll catch you guys at the class trial. Mm. I can't say I understand his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one more person's life could still be in danger. Hmm. Interesting. Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. You, son of a bitch. you need to shut the fuck up. Well, for now, Taka and me are going to drop Toko off at her room. Nice. I'm going to get dropped off. There is nothing to be done. We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation. Too sweet. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, is that okay? then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. That's true. I hate this, but if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. Bwong. First of all, I'd better check the Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. So that was four hours later. get something to drink soon. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. It's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. I really like the music. Monokuma number f file number two has <laughs> been added to the truth bullets section of your handbook. Hmm. Hey Makoto, do you have a second? Hmm? Did you need something from me? 
Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know. Uh, so, what did you need? Okay. I'm going to let you cooperate with me during my investigation. What? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. S solve? No, I just... Oh, okay. You seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. You have the honor of contributing to my investigation. So, you're inviting me to come with you? You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. You sphincter. Now then, shall we get started? But we need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened, but it looks like I'll be working with Byakuya on this one. Let's start with the lady poster. Boink. The poster's got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. The dumbbell's got some blood on it. There's a dumbbell on the floor, and it. this is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. The Monokuma file said a blow to the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? That's right. I don't imagine it could have been anything else. Truth bullet. The word blood loosed. I prefer heroism and time warp myself. Written on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it? Bloodlust. I use this locker room all the time. Now it's become the site of Chihiro's death. But why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else, then carried here. She was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her. But still, I still think she came here on her own, by choice. What makes you say that? Hmm. She'd been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monofukuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Perhaps. Hina or myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she was probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it? <clears throat> Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night. However. Perhaps, but it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret but that she also would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. Sakura's account has been added to the truth bullets. Hey Mondo, how's it going? Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chihiro talk about it, right? All I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. The cause of Chihiro's complex. I can't help wondering what it might be. Mondo's account. Okay. Now I believe it is time. It's about time for us to move on. What? Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of this case. Th that's true, but let's go. if you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. I would like to go into the boys' locker room. So, this is our next location. Uh, this place is related to the investigation. Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? <sighs> okay. Maybe this gun was used to... No, impossible. If that were true, Chihiro would be riddled with holes. There are a bunch of different pull-related items on the shelf, which have nothing to do with the case. 
go in the boys' room. That's not even the scene of the crime, idiot. Okay, well... What's a flotation device gonna do? It's gonna give me a Monokuma coin. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? <laughs> <laughs> has he been domesticated? That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, what's up? Well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your e-handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? If there were some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl... The ceiling mounted Gatling gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter! And the school regulations prohibit anyone from lending, else, from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Correctly correct. So then, that means only girls can go into the girls' locker room, and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihudo's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hey, Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? Allow me to tell, me, tell you what you're thinking. Since Shihiro was found in the girls' locker room... The killer must have been able to get in there. So in other words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Such ignorance. Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is perfect prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. Hmm. Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Yeah. You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then. Since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore. They're things. Yeah. Get it? Got it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but in order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it. So, uh... Who are you? So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakuya and get your poop together. Or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure out the rest your own damn self. <sighs> well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental faculties, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall. That'll help you understand what's going on. We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? mailbox here. That there's e handbooks inside? No wait. There's three of them. But what are they doing here? Oh so you finally found them. What did you know these were here? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So then these three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka. Hmm. 
you can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks, and when I did... Ugh. Sayaka Mizuno. You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. I didn't see that coming. You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been right in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning is prohibited. Borrowing is perfectly fine. <sighs> yeah, now I understand. <sighs> what? Hmm? Hold on a second. What's wrong? Very strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. Then the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs. The memory of it came flooding back. That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that the Mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right. It wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Okay. What? That e-handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break! It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure, and it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap! Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does. I can't hear you. But it's a secret! I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks! What? Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hard to say. You know what I think? I think this handbook isn't actually broken. But you might ask, how could that be? Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. Well, I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Broken e-handbook added to the bullets. <laughs> okay then, this should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed Chihiro. Hmm. To be exact, not quite. What? What do, you, what do you mean, not quite? What do you mean by that, to be exact, not quite? Certainly I want to reveal Chihiro's killer. But more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then you really think... You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro? Don't make me repeat myself. Absolutely. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. That murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? There's nobody else it could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's killed thousands of people. But that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be a demented psychotic killer like that? Yeah, probably. You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. What do you mean by that? Okay. Don't make me I have a basis to believe that, I assure you. Genocide Jack is one of us. Is there really proof? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. 
This will prove all the provide all the evidence you need. It's all clear. Ev evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Does something like that really? Hey, you guys! <gasps> Big trouble. Need your help. I don't have time to play with you. We're busy. Leave us alone. But it's an emergency. Emergency! Come on, please. You gotta help me. All right. This is a serious emergency. Please, please, you gotta help me. Just calm down, okay, Hina? But, but, it's an emergency. An emergency. What happened? Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Since it's Toko, I must admit, I'm intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, come on, hurry. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. It looks like she headed to the dorms. To Toko's room, most likely. You're right. Boing. Is Toko inside? Some kind of emergency. You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. Hmm. So, what's this emergency? Well, after what happened in the girl's locker room, we left Toko in her room so that she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her, you know? See how she was doing? But when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out and kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff. That's fine. We should try talking to her ourselves. Yeah, good idea. <sighs> I may as well give it a shot. ding a -ling. The door swung open, slowly and silently. So it didn't swing anything. Hi, Toko. Uh, holy crap. An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. <gasps> what? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you pulling yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. <sighs> um, yeah, sure thing. But... Could you open up, just for a second? I won't allow it. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control! Sorry, what? And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? She'd been acting like that the whole time. When I rang a little while ago, I'll I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. Um, it doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down her door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door? Does she think the same thing as Biaki? Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toko's so scared? No. Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Uh, yeah, he's right there. This idiot, right here. Hey, Byakuya, you, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean. That's fine. Sure, whatever. You're gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Uh, Byakuya stood in front of the door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments... What do you want? Leave me alone, you're all so annoying! Bacula! <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. 
I I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. And with that, the door slams shut. Even Byakuya couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing else we can do. Let's head back to the investigation. What, hold on. Byakuya, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? Hmm? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But if I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Without waiting for a reply, reply Byakuya sped away. Byakuya! I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. Just kept on walking towards his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to, to, to a stop in front of a certain room. The library? <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Bookland! Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Why are we here, Byakia? Is this the evidence that proves Genocide Jack was really... It was Genocide Jack really... It? Is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Yeah, that sentence. No. The letter? Oh, there's a lot of things to click on. Lamp. Hey, lamps are important. Okay. I don't know what I'm looking for here, Byakuya. Because you told me the letter is not important. I got nothing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for this time. Not useful at all. None of this is useful. Oh. Okay, I just assumed this was the way out of the room. Let's go. It'll all make sense once you're inside. Will it? Because it's just more books. Wow, there's so many books and files. And so much dust, too. So in other words... I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. so many files stuffed onto the shelf. What's in all these things? That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous. 
They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the Diet or something? No, I mean the ones with real power. The Secret Council controlling everything from the shadows. The Illuminat. If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. You're, you're just kidding, right? Am I? I'll just let it go. Alright, what's with this box? Hello. It's a wooden box. It's empty. Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, there was something inside. I wonder what it was. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. An extension cord, huh? Oh, what's up there? No, it's just another camera. Lamp? A desk lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byaki using in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Lamp! More files. Shelf is stuffed tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Hmm. Ah, you have a sharp eye indeed to select that file. What? That's the report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. Without making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. Oh, I've got the shelf behind Byakuya, and I've got Byakuya. There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person would never want to look at. Be careful. What do you mean? All those files there are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh? So, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. It's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guy's problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that. It's just, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but I mean, there's just so much. How could anyone have put all this together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much power Hope's Peak truly wields. Or perhaps, <laughs> the Mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Um, it's no use. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What, what do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple. Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? The documents gathered here are genuine. I have viewed them multiple times, so there is no doubt. Hold on a second. You're saying you've read all these documents, and more than once. But all this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? Hmm. My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. What? Hmm. Members of the Tagami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. 
How is that possible? So in other words, I already told you. There's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world, backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim, without a doubt, that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Byaku is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine, ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Byakuya grabbed a specific file from the shelf. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack cases has been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that every crime scene, in every, at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Like a really creepy angel, please stop showing me that picture. Bloodlust is written in blood, and the victim's body is suspended. <clears throat> it's exactly the same as what happened to Chihiro. Save your surprise. The best part is yet to come. For the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended... The only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse... Her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So, how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's, right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other words, the culprit isn't a copyright copycat killer. It's the real genocide jack. In other words, that right there is the evidence that genocide jack has hidden himself among the rest of us then Genocide Jack really is such a brutal fiendish killer really is walking around among us interesting. <laughs> things are really starting to get interesting aren't they I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game now don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen you might just manage to ferret out a clue or two if you get down on your knees and beg I might even show you myself God, you're such a wiener! There's a ton of thick file stuffed onto the bookshelf. Cold cases, graphic, blah blah. Alright, Biaki, what do you got? About that Genocide Jack case file. Could you let me see it? That's fine. What? Oh, they're playing for. Okay. <sighs> well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. Murder Cases of Genocide Jack. Top secret. Byaki handed me the file and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had all been collected. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Office Worker 32 took place in the parking lot of the victim's apartment complex. Stab wounds across his body inflicted with the same scissors that were used to attach the victim to the wall. Stab wounds across the body inflicted with the same scissors that were used to attach the victim to the wall. The 
victim's blood. The victim's apartment complex. Okay, but... Ken Harada, 32. Tetsuhiro Honda, Shoji Gaku. Kano Issei, 14. Takeshi Yoshida, 30. Kamatsu Nataro, Takafumi Gono, Uchida Naoshi, Takeshi Masamune, Yuto Yumejima. There was no end to it. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read. All of the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in, the ex in exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left in the victim's own blood. Hmm. <clears throat> now take a look at the next page, and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page. Profiling results. All of the crimes took place either on weekdays or at, at night or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. So in other words... The key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. Split personality, like the kind of thing you see on TV. So I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up until now. Or maybe it really isn't. I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Genocide Jack case file added to the truth bullets. Let's go. Alright, we should get going soon. Where are we going? Anywhere but here. We've finished our business here, haven't we? Uh, wait... Byakuya! He ran off, as usual, left without another word. Hurried out of the library to catch up with him. Because he's a walking, talking sphincter. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to ca take care of before the class trial. What? Just all of a sudden like that? Come on, enough of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he'd asked me to join him, he cut me off. In the end, I felt like it was just I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I'd uncovered something, some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed Jihiro. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that out, no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go... I have to go investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find everything I can. Well, since we're right here... What's up, Hifumi? What do you got for me, you? Ding, ding, ding! Hifumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... Another stat increase for me! Evidence? What did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that yet, just yet. I'm sure of it. But I guarantee that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his yacht lungs. Are you sure about that? Hmm. Oh yeah! Miss hmm. Ludenberg said she'd witnessed something worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? She refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Right? Okay, so where's Celeste now? The warehouse by the dorms? She was there, but at the same time, not there. 
what's it gonna be? All right, let's start with the boys' locker room. <sighs> Why is that? Wait. Hold up. This poster is a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. No, it doesn't. There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Boys locker room carpet added. Nothing else to see here, huh? The dirty girl poster shouldn't be on that wall. Right off the bat. It's the bloodstained poster. The blood is the most noteworthy part, but... The big-breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable, too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd find something like this. Oh, but wait, that reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right, there's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big-breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anybody have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker rooms. That would be Sakura. You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay then, let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys and girls locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I've never really paid any attention to the posters. I see. However... But, there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. That sounds awful. Horribly awful. We have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room, and it left a stain. Sorry, wait, what? A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with. Disappearing stain. Uh, right off the bat. Got it. Okay. But why would they move the carpet? Hey, Kyoko, have you made any progress on your investigation? Indeed. Generally speaking. However... But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well... Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But... So then... Before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Shihiro's body one more time, thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girl's locker room. Guess I take another look at the body then. And handbook is missing. That's worth worrying about. Huh. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Her hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. Isn't it? 
The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug. Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. <clears throat> Shihiro's fatal injury was, was the blow to the head. Which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right. There's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? Status of the dead body. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend her. And to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack file one more time. Yep. Boing, boing, boing. In we go again. <sighs> so that box. The wooden box is empty. The extension cord was in there before. Yeah. The desk lamp. Byaku could grab that one thing from over there and put it over there. Sure is dark over there. I want to take another look at Genocide Jack's case file. I know it was around here somewhere. It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one to do something like that. I can't think of anyone but Byakuya. Ugh. Great. No, what more do I need to check exactly? Stop functioning as a school. It didn't even happen recently. Apparently it closed down over a year ago. Killing game. Why there aren't any students here? Because it's not a real school. Serious issues that closed in the first place. The mastermind's motive. If we can figure out why they would want to imprison us all here, will that be enough to get us out? Or... Okay. Back to the desk lamp nonsense. Hang on. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Guess not. Uh, that lamp's not plugged in. The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see it's not plugged in. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. But last time I saw it, it was definitely on, and it was definitely right here. <gasps> That's right, Byakuya was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Desk lamp. Yes. Okay. We're gonna go back downstairs because we gotta find Byakuya and Celeste. Hi, Taka. Bye, Taka. You studious nerd, you. Here, but not here. I don't know where Bianca it could be, but hello, Celeste. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this fat house is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might need to direct you, but I see it was pointless. Then did you find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. 
Last night, I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What? Really? Indeed. This was right before night time. Mm -hmm. What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? Her hair's blue in this picture. What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Hmm. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assume she was merely stocking to up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girl's locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this would ever have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went out to the girls' locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag that Celeste said she saw Chihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account has been added to the truth bullets. Well, if you're trying to dispose of her clothes, you would go to the same place everybody else was disposing of shit, right? <laughs> Guess not. here. Yeah, but, you know, there might be a him there. Would you put him in the laundry? Be a good place to hide clothes. Does it have nothing to do with this case? Uh, apparently. Alright. That locker's open. Lockers. One of them is unlocked, but I don't see anything inside. Fine! Be that way. this? Is it the heat source for the sauna? It might have. Maybe you could burn clothing in it. Celeste's account. Hina, anything to contribute? Hina, how's Toko doing? Same as before. She won't come out and she just keeps mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. You, you left her? My head was all swimmy and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry. I'm going to head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? A donut, of course. Of course? There's two things I'm sure, I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts. Okay. I bet Chihiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. 
Oh, I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? She was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yep, it's true. And it wasn't just us, either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? I don't know. She talked to all the, talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? <gasps> Wait, maybe. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I really never really saw her as that kind of girl. Alright, Hina. I guess I'm done. Are you bored now? Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Apparently. It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! There. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! If I must. Begin the class trial, or... Uh, it's about to begin. The red door is right through here. I don't wanna. I don't have any evidence on this one. I really don't know who it could be. Ahem. So, is everyone ready to... What? Am I blind, or are we missing someone? Yeah, Toko's not here. And Toko is You really don't rem you really don't remember? Uh -huh. Kidding, I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. Okie dokie. Do? I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. And just like that he like he said, a few minutes later. He reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. I told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Terrible. You're terrible. So, now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. <sighs> Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. <sighs> God, I cannot. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. And that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. We have no choice, right? We have to do this. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions, couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally... It came to a sudden stop. What do you think? I redecorated! Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Don't waste our time with your stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good, you're rip raring to go, gotta say. I don't hate it, not at all. Okay then, let's get this show on the road. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. That nobody sits in. So the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial.
Yes. Uh, influence gauge by two. Increases your truth bullet rate of fire. Effective during the non-stop debate and the bullet time final strike. Increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. Yeah, that's right. Bullet capacity effective during the bullet time battle. I might as well have them, right? We're going to save right there. End your school life. Alright. 